Give us a sense from the inside, because you saw from the inside, what do you think has gone on and what should we learn from the experience? Well, look, I think we've had a, a bit of a crisis on, on some of the leading elite universities in America in, in the last few months. And we haven't had one in a long time. It's really been a, a long period of quiet and progress at those uh, schools. And so there are a number of questions that have been raised that haven't been raised in quite a while. Uh, and uh, what about the response to it? Are, are people a little rusty? I mean, I, I went to school back in the 70s when there was a lot of this going on. Uh, and in fact, uh, administrations were used to dealing with demonstrations. Is part of the issue that, in fact, the administrations haven't been used to this, they still have to get the rule book back out. I think that's exactly right. And frankly, trustees haven't given governance a thought in, in, a, in a very long period of time. You don't tend to think about governance when everything's going great, but when you have something that you know, creates a controversy, suddenly people look back at that. And I think a lot of trustees you know, maybe have forgotten that the way universities are governed, that it's a combination of trustees, uh, a president and the administration, and also the faculty play an important role. Well, we'll talk about that for a minute, about governance specifically, uh, because we've had, for example, at Penn, but also at Harvard and other places, uh, donors really speak out very forcefully, even make demands, as they would put it, about change to be made. Uh, back when I was practicing law, I know you did as well, we used to talk about a bad volleyball team where everybody goes to the same position. What are the respective positions, if it's done properly, of the trustees, the president of administration, the faculty, and for that matter, donors? What should those positions be? Look, I think to start with donors, I, I, I think donors are absolutely free to give to whatever organizations they want or not to and to withhold for any reason they choose to, but they're not shareholders, so I don't think they should have a particularly loud voice in how a university is run. There is a governance system that's been in place for decades, if not centuries, in many cases, and that involves really trustees, the administration, and the faculty. Historically, trustees really focused on the financial viability of the organization. They did the budget. They did the review the audit of the financials. They invested the endowment. They made sure that the, the entity was going to be viable for the long term because these are meant to be perpetual institutions, of course. Uh, the president and the administration really run the, the, the business of the university day to day. And along with the faculty, they run all the academic affairs. And it's really been very rare in my experience, really almost two decades uh, on a board of a university where the, the trustees get it all involved in academics. So I think they need to be careful uh, about how much they reach into that area. And I know faculty are very concerned that, that they not reach too far into that area. You mentioned two areas, academics on the one hand, finances on the other. Obviously, you're a prime example of somebody who's really, really knowledgeable in finance. It would make sense to have you on a board and indeed chair of a board. There is a third area, though, which I would call reputational risk. I mean, existential risk for the institution that maybe includes both academics and finances. But who should be responsible for that? And what sort of people do you need at the table making those decisions? Well, I think clearly if it's an existential sort of threat, I mean, everybody needs to be involved in that. I don't think trustees can sort of seize control, nor can the president do whatever the president wants to do or the faculty take charge either. It probably needs to be everybody uh, involved in something like that. But I don't think trustees should overreact in this in the, in the situation of, a, of what could be a short-term crisis and, and take too much control. It still needs to be a collaborative uh, effort because that is the peculiar nature of governance in these these institutions. They're not public companies and they really aren't run by uh, like public companies historically. By the way, there's another player that's gotten involved here and that's the United States Congress uh, because the mm -hmm. president of Pennsylvania as well as Harvard and MIT were called before Congress. What, if anything, is the proper role of the government in trying to influence the way this is handled on college campuses? Well, I think the government has a very big role, of course, in public universities and a smaller role in private universities. But, you know, governments get involved in, in, in a lot of ways in any institution in American life. So you have to be ready to deal with congressional or other government inquiries when they come. And they do have uh, they do provide financial support uh, to even the most private of universities in the sense of research funding and things like that. So they, they're going to have their legitimate questions from time to time. And and those need to be uh, to be answered. But fundamentally, the institutions we're talking about are private, and they're run fundamentally by the trustees, the administration of the university, and the faculty. And that's worked for a long time. I mean, I think it's important to remember, you know, elite universities in America are the envy of the world. I mean, people all over America uh, go to great lengths to get into these places. People from all over the world do. You don't see a lot of you know, kids from New York City trying to go to a, a foreign university to get their degree. You see a lot of them in Europe and Asia, Latin America, elsewhere trying to come to America to get a degree because they see real value to that. 
When problems develop in any large in institution, that's corporations as well as, as, as um, colleges, I always ask myself, is it a substantive problem or is it a communications problem? And often it's a combination of the two. As you look back at what's happened at Penn, at Harvard, at MIT, how much of this is really a substantive underlying question of values and what the rules are as opposed to not being clear enough on exactly where everybody is and what the rules should be? I think it, it's probably a fairly substantive issue. I mean, communications is always a, a, a part of these things as well, but I think it's, it's a fairly substantive issue. And I think the biggest factor, the biggest challenge really has been uh, that we haven't had any, any sort of a crisis or controversy in quite a long time. I mean, you referred earlier to the 1960s. That's a long time ago, well before I went to school or you went to school. Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of unrest on campuses back then. And frankly, since then, it's been relatively quiet. I mean, there have not been that many controversies. There have not been that many moments when trustees asked about governance or what their role should be. There have not been many moments when I think faculty felt threatened uh, by trustees and, and what role our donors uh, and what role they might uh, like to play. And so when something suddenly comes along, you know, uh, everybody doesn't remember their role anymore because they haven't thought about their role in quite a while. Things just kind of hummed along quite, quite nicely. In the 1960s and into the 70s, part of what we saw on college campuses was a reflection more broadly of what's going on in society. I wonder if that's part of what we're seeing now, because generally across our society, there is more polarization. People are more outspoken. Uh, they're more actually coarse with one another in the no nature of the discourse. And if that's right, what can campuses do, what can colleges do, maybe to help us more broadly in society deal with some of these issues? Look, I think that's a major factor here. There, we are in a more divided society, and the, and the divisions tend to be quite deep, and people tend to see things in a black or white way. There's a lot of, a lot of, and the voices you hear are on the extremes, right? You're the extreme right, the extreme left. I do think it's important, and I've tried to convey in some of the comments I've made in recent uh, days and weeks that, you know, what you see on social media, what you see maybe in a newspaper quote, what you see in a clip on, on television is a very small part of what actually happens on campus. I mean, as with anything else in life, the noisiest people get the most attention, right? So uh, it, it's a small fraction of 1% of the people at these elite schools that are really actively involved in a way that anybody would find troubling. You know, 99% of those students are going about their business, trying to get a degree, trying to get into law school or med school or get a job at Goldman Sachs or Teach for America, and they're really not that involved in this. But yet you can get a sense from the outside, particularly if you're looking at an Instagram or Facebook or, or just, uh, you know, reading the tabloids or something, you're going to get a different view about what's happening on these campuses. Scott, clearly you've thought through these issues a lot. You've been on the inside looking at them. You have a lot of very reasonable sounding thoughts about what should be done, what should not be done. Why'd you step down? Because you could still contribute to, to the solution, could you not? Uh, I, I could certainly. I mean, I felt like our board got particularly divided at one point, and I felt like clearly there is a debate, and it's not just a pen, it's a, a number of schools across America about the role of trustees, faculty, and administration and managing universities. I think that's a very important debate. And frankly, I felt like I could contribute more to that debate from the outside than the inside. You know, if you're the chair of an institution that has in our case, almost 50 trustees. You have to speak for that whole group. You can't. You have to be very, very careful what you say because you're speaking for the whole entity, a whole large group of trustees. Uh, if you're on the outside, you can speak more freely. And I think I, I have contributed, and hopefully, even these comments here uh, will help people understand that there's not there's not a huge crisis. It's a small percent, uh, very, very small percent of the students that are doing things that would be troubling for most people. Uh, yes, there are things you can do about that, but we shouldn't fundamentally tear up, you know, a governance model that's worked for a very, very long time and made our universities the envy of the world uh, because of a very short-term crisis.